Welcome back to John's Films. I've been really busy around here putting in the new 3950 box back there. Over here we got a new server racked up, and there'll be benchmarks on all that, but I had to stop all of that because I saw something on the Blackmagic Design forums that got me a little worried. It says that in 16.2, there's a lot of people that encountered a problem where the free version of DaVinci Resolve performance dropped massively. And so I want to look into that and understand what's causing the performance drop, and is it truly that big? How does it compare to the benchmarks I've previously run of Studioverse Free and DaVinci Resolve 15? Let's go check out what it looks like. Much like our previous testing, I've got a few clips on a timeline here that starts out with some DJI Mavic Pro 2 footage, goes into some H.264 shot on a GH5, and finally we jump here into some Blackmagic RAW shot on a BIMC 4K. As we get deeper into the timeline, we get more effects and more grades put on it. Right here at the front, we've got nothing. It's ungraded footage. We go to graded footage. Here, we start to add in with the GH5 some transitions and some timeline effects. Then we go into fusion effects and work that happens there. Finally, we go into the graded and noise reduction B-RAW, which you can see the pain. The rest of the footage is for me to use in render testing. First, we'll start by running through the free and then the studio timeline performance, and there'll be render tests at the end. The graphics card is an NVIDIA 2080 Ti, specifically a Gigabyte Boris Extreme, and the storage is three NVMe drives. They're Samsung 960 Pros. I've got one that runs the OS in the program, and then one for the project files, and one for render. During our test, I will keep up here on the left the GPU temperature, the GPU usage, the CPU temperature, and the CPU utilization. This will be interesting as we see what the free version does and versus the studio version in hardware utilization. We will ensure we do not use optimized media. Our proxy mode is off, render cache is off, and our fusion memory cache is off. Now let's jump into it, playing back our ungraded, crystal clear, now our graded footage on the 10-bit H.265. Graded footage looks like it's playing back quite smooth. You notice up here in the top left of our preview window, we can see a readback on the frame rate. And if we get any mixed or dropped frames, we'll see a red sign up there. Looks like it can track pretty well to a lightly graded footage. Through the effects, these are timeline effects, so you can think of rotations. Mm, looks like we got a little bit of a blip there. Let's see if we make it through. Nope, not going to get through those. And you can see spikes in the CPU and the GPU. Here it's just standard H.264 off the GH5. Shouldn't have a problem here, but as we hit the fusion effects I threw in the middle of the frame there, really see a spike in CPU utilization, and we're lagging. You can tell we're not keeping up with the frames. We should be in the B-RAW now. Transition's already blown by, and we're halfway through our follow-up clips. Let's see if it's ever going to catch up. Somewhat, the fusion is killing it on top of uh, the H.264 still, and I've already blown through all the B-RAW with the grade and the noise reduction. So that was kind of depressing. Um, if we go back, if you just want to see what happens with the B-RAW, with the grade and the noise reduction, we're unable to keep up with even the noise reduction, which is running in the GPU, but remember, it's a studio-only effect, which is why you're seeing this running at the top. All right. Now, I'm going to run some render tests on this and flip over to our studio version. Keep in mind how much we've been utilizing the CPU and the GPU here. Let's jump to it. We'll start by checking to make sure we're not using optimized media, our proxies off, render cache none, and fusion memory cache <clears throat> off. Those are a bunch of helpers that help us pre-render and then save. Now we're running through the graded footage of a Mavic Pro. This is 10-bit footage again. It's running perfectly smooth as graded. Where we saw in the free, we started to get some hiccups here when we went to some timeline effects, and especially when we got into the fusion effects. Most notably, the playhead ran ahead. What's really amazing here is the amount of processor that we're churning. We're at 6 or 7% CPU utilization and about 40% on the graphics card. A couple of catches there, but nothing bad. It's still running through. If you had on the helpers, you'd really blow through this once and then be thrilled. Okay, now we're going to step into 
GH5 footage, H.264, with some fusion on top. It really blew up last time we were running through this. This looks like it's keeping up better, and we should move into the B-RAW now. It is lagging a touch. The B-RAW is going to be heavily graded with some noise reduction. When we get there, the fusion effects are dragging this down. Immense spike here in the CPU. So we can see fusion is probably the next optimization effort that they could pick up. And now we're into the grading spot. Let's look at some of that B-RAW fresh. You can see it's playing back fine. It is killing us in the GPU due to the noise reduction. And I used three frames better, um, maybe six, and then I used some temporal as well, or some spatial as well. Yeah, now we're back to normal H.264 footage. All right, so next thing we'll do, we'll run the render test, and I'll give you the results. Something to note here in the render, the job that I set up for render, I had to set up in the to be able to run in both free and studio. Note in studio, you have the option of using the NVIDIA NVENC encoder, which is a hardware-based encoder explicitly created in hardware to render H.264. It's much faster than the native. You don't have access to that in the free version. I'm going to run both native and the NVENC encoder, and we'll see the results here. To refresh your memory, here we have our results from when DaVinci Resolve 16 was in beta. And the first thing we see is that the 1070, which I ran separately from the 2080 Ti, showed about the same time in the free version. That's because it's leveraging the CPU. When we got over to Studio, the native version of DaVinci Resolve with a render was 2 minutes and 45 seconds, which was better than uh, the 343 that we saw running with the CPU only in free. However, when we got down to the Studio NVENC encoder at 2 minutes and 15 seconds, we saw roughly a 40% improvement between free and studio leveraging that NVENC encoder. Let's see what we've got today. Talk about interesting. We have a negligible difference between the native encoding in DaVinci Resolve Free and Studio. In fact, at a 24 minute runtime, that's pretty much very little. However, check out the 64% increase in performance with the NVENC encoder that's provided to us by DaVinci Resolve Studio. That is fantastic when looking back at the 40% in performance that we saw in our prior test. Yes, there was a similar test performed. It was not exactly the same, but this is just insane results. And before the John, you're an idiot comments start, uh, check out the video above if you have concerns about the quality of the render coming off of the NVENC encoder. And when you take that minimal difference shown in the video above, Compared to the adulteration that occurs to my videos when they're uploaded to YouTube, I think we're good. It does appear that there is a better reason to upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio now. The performance alone is reason enough, but of course you get all the other features like in the neural engine with the speed warp and you get noise reduction and a bunch of other good stuff. So if you're on the fence, maybe this is enough to kick you over. If you're still enjoying the free version, hey, keep at it, but obviously you'll have to be a bit more patient these days. Thanks for watching John's film. Subscribe and like so others can help find this video and have a great day.